Hi there. In this video, I'm using the FET animation circuit construction kit DC Virtual Lab in order to look at the current in series and parallel circuits. Now, I'm going to build a very simple circuit with one cell up here. As I said before, it's labeled as battery within the animation or simulation, I should say, but we would call it in National Five Physics, we would call that a cell. Right. I will just build the circuit like so. Now, normally this wire would be dragging down here and another wire in this position, but I'm actually going to construct that connection there with two wires. And the reason is I'll split the connection at one point and place an ammeter in series in that position. I'll do that all the way around the circuit. So rather than one single connection from there to there, I'm going to make two so that again I can split it and place an ammeter in this position like so. Almost there. So I'll have several ammeters around this series circuit and we'll be able to see what's happening to the current, whether the current's the same at all points or whether in fact the current is going to split. There we have it. So there is our circuit. You can see we have a current in the circuit. You can see the electrons moving anti-clockwise and both the lamps are of course lighting. Now what I'll actually do is I'll open up that connection, this connection here, that connection there, this one, and that one. And in each of these positions I'm going to place an ammeter. Open up these gaps slightly. Get an ammeter in there. There we have that. I'll do it's not perfectly horizontal, but that's not too bad. And I meter in here. Every time I do that, it does tend to move it slightly. I showed as well in the last video that if I'm dragging a component by the middle, so I'm clicking and moving it, then of course, as I said, it will of course move. But when I click the connection at the end, I can then rotate the component. So there we have it. Of course, all of these ammeters so far, because I don't have a complete circuit, they're all showing zero amps. It's not until I place in the last ammeter and of course complete the circuit that I'll actually measure the current on any of these ammeters. So in fact, once I enter the last ammeter at this position here and end up with a complete circuit. So let's see what happens. So there we have it. So it appears that within a series circuit, the current is the same at all points. 0 0.43, sorry, 0 0.45 amps on this ammeter, this ammeter, this one, this one, and this one. Of course, the current within that circuit would depend on the supply voltage. As I said, the voltage there is 9 volts on that cell. And of course, it would depend on the resistance within the circuit. This lamp has a resistance of 10 ohms. This lamp has a resistance of 10 ohms. Now, I don't know if you know this, but within this uh, simulation, I'm actually setting the resistance of the wires themselves to zero. And a real wire would have a very, very small resistance, very close to zero. Ammeters as well, when they're designed correctly, should have a very small resistance as well. Should also have a resistance of zero ohms. So the current within that circuit depends on the supply voltage and the total resistance in the circuit. But in a series circuit, the current is the same at all points. Next, of course, I'm going to get rid of all of this and I'm going to build a parallel circuit. So again, a cell up at the top and we'll place in two lamps like so. This time, I think what I'll actually do is I'll just build the circuit with the ammeters as we go rather than making all these gaps and then having to fill them in later. Now, of course, before I've completed the circuit, I'll actually have to build a series circuit just with the first lamp. And what you should see is that the current is the same in both ammeters. Let's see once I make this next connection like so. So there you go. So that's a series circuit. Current up here is 0 0.9 amps. Current down there, 0 0.9 amps as well. But that will possibly change 
when I make this into a parallel circuit. So here's the second branch, like so. We won't see any change, of course, to the ammeters until I complete this parallel circuit. And almost there, one more connection. There we go. So basically what's happened now is, of course, the total current within that circuit is now increased. The reason why that is, is because of the resistance uh, of the, the whole circuit. When we add lamps or any, or resistors, I guess you could say, uh, any component with resistance, when you add those in parallel, the total resistance will actually decrease. Now, we can talk about that in another video. Anyway, the total current within the circuit is now 1.8 amps. But within this branch, we get half of that current, 0 0.9 amps. And this branch also has a current of 0 0.9 amps. So what's actually happening in the parallel circuit is that the current is splitting. You can actually see, if you look at this part in the circuit, you can see some of these electrons when they come down here. Some will move through here to the right within this branch. Some will actually move down here. So of course a current is related to the flow of these charges. It's actually the, trans the charge transferred per second is the current in amps. So basically within a parallel circuit, this current is splitting. As I said, within this one, 1 1.8 amps here, and we get half that current within this branch, half the current within this branch. Now that's only happening because the resistance of the top lamp, 10 ohms, is the same as the resistance of the bottom lamp also 10 ohms. Let's see what happens when one of these lamps has a larger resistance. So in fact, we'll increase the resistance of the bottom lamp to 20 ohms. So now what's happening is the bottom lamp has a higher resistance, 20 ohms, than the top one, which is 10 ohms. Now, what's again happening is, of course, that the current's splitting. We now have a smaller current, 1.35, and that's splitting so that we have in the top branch 0 0.9 amps and in the bottom branch 0 0.45 amps. So in fact, this branch here, the bottom branch, which has a higher resistance, in fact, it has twice the resistance, therefore the current is half within that branch. So within a parallel circuit, the current does split, but it won't always split evenly. It'll split depending on the resistance of each branch. So the branch, and that's this bottom one here, the branch with the highest resistance will have the smallest current. Okay, this is our last circuit. It's a complex circuit with, as you can see, two lamps in series here and also two lamps in parallel. Now, obviously I've saved you time having to watch me build this whole circuit. And I've also placed a switch at this position. When I close that switch, then the same rules as before apply. So what I can see is these two lamps, which are in series, we have the same current in both, both of them, 0 0.36 amps. But again, when we come to this point where the circuit splits and I have two parallel branches, then of course the current is splitting. I end up with 0 0.18 amps in this lamp and 0 0.18 amps in this lamp. Now, again, I could change the resistance of one of these lamps. I'm gonna make this one smaller, in fact, down to five ohms. So the total current in the circuit now is 0 0.39, but again, that's the same current in both these lamps in series. That 0 0.39 amps is splitting so that we end up with 0 0.26 in the top lamp. It has a higher current because it has a smaller resistance. It has a resistance, as I said, of five ohms, whereas the resistance of the bottom one is 10 ohms. So the lamp with the higher resistance ends up with a smaller current. Now let's try changing the resistance of one of these two lamps in series. So I'm gonna increase this one in fact to 20 ohms. So what's now happened is again, the current in the circuit is decreased because the total resistance of the circuit has increased. But again, the current for both of these lamps in series is the same, 0 0.27 amps. Now you can see, however, this one is brighter. Now that's for a different reason. It's not related to the current, it's actually related to the voltage across it. We can maybe talk about that later. And also the power dissipated in it. But even though this one has a higher resistance of 20 ohms compared to this one, 
the current, because both of these are in series, the current in both these lamps is the same. But as before, when the current splits, a, the lamp here, which has the highest resistance, actually ends up. If it's in parallel with another lamp, it ends up with a smaller current because of its higher resistance. So there we have it. Why don't you try the same simulation, circuit construction kit, DC Virtual Lab, one of the FET simulations, and place your lamps or possibly resistors in series and parallel, measure the current at different places within the circuit and see how you get on. For now though, we'll see you next time.